Welcome to the Ling Six Sigma Academy Yellow Belt Training. This is the second module in the introduction of enterprise wide deployment. We will discuss lean principles and we will introduce the eight types of waste. The concepts of pull and flow within the organization will also be explained. Furthermore, we will demonstrate how to strive for perfection and the best way to introduce the house of quality. Lean starts with looking through the eyes of the customer to identify value. If we understand what is of value to our customers, we can strive to optimize our operations to provide maximum value at an optimal cost. We can do this by eliminating waste. Waste is defined as any operation not adding value to the product. By creating a constant flow, the operations are balanced and the total operation becomes streamlined. By using pull, we get rid of unnecessary inventories and by using continuous improvement, the organization strives for perfection. Lean involves the development of a common vision, which is the direction the company needs to take for future success. Next to a common vision, there needs to be shared principles within the company. These rules should be the same for everybody, including management, who should walk the talk. By providing the right tools and methods, everybody will be able to perform their task in an optimal way. To achieve this, however, tasks need to be executed in a disciplined and cooperative way. As stated earlier, the focus of Lean is to determine what is of value to our customer. It is important to realize that every process has a customer and also that every process is a customer. This means that your suppliers need to find out what makes their product valuable to you as a customer. To be able to find out what the customer defines as value, we need to listen carefully to our customer. Any operation that the customer is willing to pay us for can be defined as being value adding. From this standpoint, we can start to judge every operation in our company from the perspective of our customers as being value adding or not. Once you have defined what the value increasing operations are within your company, there are two ways to increase the value of your product. The first is to do things right the first time. This means that you prevent making mistakes as much as possible. Also, this means that if a mistake happens, you take care not to pass on the mistake to the customer. To start with, it is important that you don't receive mistakes from your suppliers. The second way to increase value in your product is to eliminate waste in your operations. In the next slide, we will show you how to recognize waste. Here we see eight types of waste in production. In Japanese, this is called muda. Every one of these types of waste are not in the interest of the customer. And in general, the customer is not willing to pay you for executing the operations. In most companies, you will still find a lot of these types of waste occurring frequently, probably even more than value adding operations. This means that there are a lot of opportunities to remove this waste and therefore many opportunities to reduce unnecessary costs. The eighth type of waste is a special type, which recognizes that by not using the available knowledge, we are essentially trying to reinvent the wheel. Besides discovering waste or muda in everything we do, there are two other types of problems that we have to solve when striving for perfection. Muri is the problem of trying to push the equipment or people beyond their natural limits. This will eventually lead to problems with quality, safety and breakdowns. One way of fighting Muri is to introduce standardized work and to provide training for the operators. Mira, or unevenness, is the second difficulty that can cause serious problems, leading to downtime and quality issues. We can remove Mira by leveling out the workload over the different operations and by removing bottlenecks. Flow is created by taking a different view of our processes. Instead of focusing on each separate activity, we need to look at the whole process. To streamline our operations, we need to remove intermediate inventories or buffers between operations. We also need good reliability and operations with predictable outcomes. Flow means that the different phases of our operations become interdependent on each other. To make this possible, there should be a focus on the operational processes and customer value. To prevent inventory waste, the leading production principle should be pull. This means that we should produce only when there is a demand from our customer. 
This also means that we should not produce more than our customer needs at the given time. To be able to do this, there are a few essential conditions that must exist, such as good cooperation, communication, and alignment of the supply chain. In addition, rapid changeovers between products and a flexible workforce are important. In this picture, we can see the flow of pull of information going upstream, which causes a downstream flow of products being produced only when needed. Only small buffers are allowed between processes. To be able to determine the lead time of a product, we can use Little's Law. This can be used in a stable system and predicts the lead time based on the work in progress divided by the output. This formula is not dependent on a certain distribution in the order intake. This formula implies that when we are able to decrease the work in progress, it will automatically lead to shorter lead time. In most companies, we see that problems in the organization are hidden by a great amount of work in progress. If we cannot guarantee first time right, machine uptime, or quick product changeovers, this will lead to big inventories. In the example, we see that with 150 customer orders in the system and an output of 10 orders a day, our lead time is on average 15 days for each order. When we start implementing lean, we need to reduce the inventory levels. In the example, the water level is lowered until we hit a problem. After eliminating these problems, we become more and more lean. The lead time for our customers is reduced, so our customers are more satisfied. Our costs are less because we eliminated waste in our organization. You will realize that this process of eliminating waste never ends, so continuous improvement is necessary. To continuously improve, we use a technique called Kaizen. This technique is about sustaining what has been achieved and attempting to do something better every day. Splitting up improvement into small steps makes it possible for all operators on the shop floor to contribute to this process. The plan, do, check, act circle can be used to improve everything from processes and procedures to documentation. To improve on a continuous basis, we also use 8D methods for handling customer complaints and DMAIC projects for bigger changes. The implementation of Lean is not a top-down process. To succeed with Lean, the discussions and implementation of continuous improvement must be as low as possible in the organization. The management can contribute to the implementation, however, by facilitating Lean. This means that management makes training resources available on the shop floor and provides all operators time for the deliberation and the execution of improvements. A good communication tool for the vision of the company is the House of Quality. This contains the objectives of the company, which can be seen in the roof. In general, the House of Quality is about reducing lead time and costs and increasing quality and safety. The pillars are represented by the logistical and quality tools and methods that are used to reach this. The foundation of the house contains the values and principles of the company, and at the center of it all is continuous improvement. By explaining the house of quality to everyone within the organization, we create a base for lean. To use a house of quality in the implementation of operational excellence, it is necessary to distinguish between the vision and the mission of the company. The vision is the view of the future towards which, towards which the company is aiming. Everyone should understand what vision the company has. The mission of the company describes how the management believes the company will achieve this by describing the activities required to realize the vision. We have now reached the end of this yellow belt training module. In this session, we have discussed lean principles and the eight types of waste. The need for flow and pull in the organization to reduce lead time was also explained. Finally, we introduced the house of quality as a way to communicate the vision and mission to all individuals within the organization. We thank you for your interest and we hope to see you back soon at the Lean Six Sigma Academy.